So if anybody's interested in knowing like why we might be discussing some of this stuff, we've all made recent videos talking about a question from a Christian named Kyle. I mean, me and Paul literally talked to Kyle yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we got to talk with Kyle and Kyle did not agree with a lot of the way that Craig, his response was. Well, he uh, did say that in the chat. Well, yeah, yeah, we talk about chat. that first. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, Kyle, Kyle super chatted in. Put under. <laughs> Kyle super chatted in to to say, "Hey, it's me. Thanks for answer, answering my question." Yeah, and then I can he, understand that. He's an, he seems like Craig a very nice person. His, that was the emotional part of the video. Was William and Craig poured out his heart. Suddenly, he got very verklempt, and he wanted to say, "Oh no, I like I would. I want to ask Kyle some questions because I hope that I didn't mess up his life." Right. So what? Well, the way he phrased it was something like, "So these mean internet atheists have said that mm. my pastoral advice might not be very good. So I'm really going out on a limb here. I'm really putting myself out there. But Kyle, could you say if it was no good for you? And as if Kyle's just going to no. turn around and go, "Yeah, it was terrible." <laughs> well, what can he say? Yeah, that's. Oh, well, oh. Kyle wrote back and he said something along the lines of, I "Almost that, uh, I thank you for." making me realize the distinction between these two things, but also uh, for making me realize that I shouldn't be a nominal Christian. Yeah, right. Which is like the vaguest backhanded compliment, I think. Yeah. But I mean, like, like, like we, we literally talked to him yeah. yesterday and Kyle yesterday said that the answers were garbage. <laughs> so so yeah, he like, literally like, says, well, wow. he says right here, just so everybody could see, like, I'm not going to play it, but like tell Craig, because he's asking Kyle in the chat. Dr. Craig, he could call him to camera. Do yeah, yeah, yeah. And he <laughs> didn't like Craig, Craig reads it and says, Dr. Craig. Yeah, t tell Dr. Craig that I have appreciated the pastoral advice. I understand the need for relationship with God and to not be a nominal Christian. I think this was a polite response to him. He's trying to like, I'm going to give you like only the positive responses that I, you know, I'm not going to tell you like, I think you really butchered that one, Dr. Craig, Dr. Craig, you know, like. I, I don't think he was going to say that. There's kind of an authority. He is an authority figure. And so like there's a sense of authority here, especially when he's like a father in the faith kind of figure to Christians. You know what I mean? Well, of course, what I was the other part of the stream was right at the end where William and Craig told Cameron that he was doing a good job. Good job, buddy. And Cameron like was welling up with almost tears then at the end. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, told me I'm okay. Except they had the, with, the, like, on back the backwards hat. But <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say Kyle left that comment. And obviously That's just to, because I wanted to, I think what he says is actually precisely a point that I wanted to raise when he said, guys, my response to Craig was me being nice. I wasn't going to give him oh, a really? response in the live chat. And it's like. But that's sort of the point, right, isn't it? Because yeah. that's the opportunity. If Craig's got a false belief, that's the opportunity to... But, but this is what I mean about the performative element of the apologetics, yeah. right? Because he's saying, look, I'm really putting myself out there. But he actually isn't because there's no <laughs> chance that you're going to give him a negative response in that context. And it makes... The performance makes it look like it's honest truth-seeking, but it isn't because um, you're too afraid to tell the truth in that context, right? Or yeah. you respect, you could call it afraid in another polite way. Yeah. And it's like, you respect him so much, you're not trying to offend or whatever. And I get it. Yeah, but everyone is, even Cameron, the host, right? Everyone's too scared, Dr. Craig, like everyone's too scared to tell the guy the truth. He's surrounded himself by like, yes, man. It's a, there's a, a kind of epistemic bubble created where no one can actually ask the difficult questions because... Mm. The thing that frustrates me with that is that I knew that Craig wouldn't take any responsibility. He wouldn't even do, I'm going to go slightly back and then come back to this. <laughs> Earlier on, Derek, you were saying about theists and interlocking with them and seeing whether or not actually they're in pursuit of the truth or whether or not it's about assuming dissonance. My experience is that most theists are actually, they really are in pursuit of truth. I watched your conversation with Kyle. Kyle strikes me as just an earnest individual, like something just Good dude, absolutely good dude. Obviously philosophically informed as well. So I, I, you know, respect to him. I can see rational disagreement. And I can see that someone like that is someone that there's a conversation to be had. It's like, oh, let me restate that. You know, there's lots of this going on. Right. I don't think that that happens with apologists. Craig doesn't admit fault. He doesn't admit, hey, maybe I misread the question. Hey, maybe I didn't express myself. Like if he did go into the prag pragmatic Pasc Pascalian wage of thing, you can like control find on both on, on on his on his publishment you can control find all of the key words associated with pascal's wager and none of them come up epistemology comes up and it just feels to me that like he's even willing to put kyle under the bus to save his reputation here and that's just egregious but 
hey, maybe that's not the case. Maybe this is just, you know, me reading into it. And, you know, people... And if you don't accept my answer, you're not a true Christian, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, yeah. It's it's very unfortunate, but, like, that is just the way that it goes. Uh, interacting with apologists is just a different game to interacting with theists. It's just it's very, very strange. Very, very strange. I like to do my once-a-stream callback to my former life in Star Wars. My first day at Lucasfilm when I worked there, they pulled me aside. And one of the first things they give you is, is operating, operating instructions for dealing with George personally. And one of the things I was told on day one was you never, ever, ever say no to George. No one says no to George. You just don't say no to him. You can say, I'll look into it. Or you can say, maybe. And then a couple of days later, you can come back maybe with some reasons, but the initial response always had to be yes. And I think whatever you think of the Disney era of Star Wars, the era of prequels that I worked on are partly a result of someone being at a point in their career where no one says no to them and how mm -hmm. bad an idea that can be, right? Like when no one's strong enough to say, hey, maybe Jar Jar's a bad idea. <laughs> I was going to go that. Then, you know, this is, that's what you get. And I, I actually fear for myself, you know, that point in my life where no one will say, no one will take away my Twitter account when I'm being problematic, right? I'm almost feeling like a William and Craig is approaching that level where maybe someone should have him stop being on camera. But that's not up to me. He, it's gold for us. It is yeah. Gold for us. yeah, it is.